Hello, George Diamond here. Now today we're looking at the second video in our introduction to the derivative and the tangent line problem. Now, in the first video we looked at, we kind of introduced our, our two longhand formulas for finding the derivative or finding the slope of a, of a line at a particular point. Now what we're going to look at today are several examples of using, using our derivative formula. Now we're going to look, look at both formulas, all right? So the general derivative formula and the slope at a point. So what we have here, our, our first problem, so we want to find the slope of the, ten, of the line tangent to the graph of f of x at the given point. And we're going to do f of x equals 2x minus 3 at the point 2, 1. So let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can calculate the, the derivative, in this case the slope, at the point 2, 1. Now we're going to do it two ways, all right? We're going to, we're going to try the, what's called the, the general derivative formula, then we're going to try the alternative formula, the formula for calculating slope at a point. So let's start off with this formula. Now we introduced the uh, general derivative formula on our last video, but if you remember, it says the limit as h approaches zero of the function at x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So the function at x plus h minus the function itself divided by h. So now, uh, as we set this up, now some of you may remember this in pre-calculus. This is basically the same formula we call the difference quotient in pre-calculus. So as we set this up, okay, to get our derivative, uh, to start off, let's take, you have to take x plus h and you got to substitute it in for every x in your function. So as you set up your numerator here, now, let's start off with brackets, All right, so make sure you keep your grouping symbols, so we're going to group the f of x plus h minus f of x. All right, so to start off, let's take uh, x plus h and substitute it into our function for x. It'll be two times the quantity x plus h minus 3. All right, now that's the function at x plus h. I mean, so you're just, all you're doing is substituting x plus h in for every x in your function. Okay, minus f of x. Now f of x is simply the function itself. Now the function here is 2x minus 3. Now make sure you put this in grouping symbols also. So 2x minus 3. So you can do brackets, you can do parentheses, it doesn't matter. All this divided by h. All right. Now, when we get finished with this uh, calculating our derivative, now the h on the bottom of the expression has to cancel out somehow with the numerator. So somehow we, that h has to go right, in order to calculate our derivative. Now, let's see if we can simplify this expression in our numerator. Watch your grouping symbols. Now, this is where the uh, algebra part comes in to calculus. So uh, simplifying this stuff just is just uh, having pretty good algebra skills to be able to simplify this. So let's simplify the uh, uh, the 2 times x plus h is multiplied 2 inside your parentheses. It would be 2x plus 2h minus 3. Now, here let's distribute the minus sign in, inside, our, inside our brackets. It would be minus 2x plus 3, all that divided by h. Now, using the longhand formula here, a lot of times you end up with a you know, pretty big expression sometimes on the top of your fraction. But what happens, a lot of these terms are going to add up to 0. So if you notice here, 2x and the minus 2x, those are additive inverses, they add up to 0. The minus 3 and the plus 3, those two add up to 0. And that leaves us with just 2h over h. Now remember what I said at the beginning now, uh, by the time we get to do the derivative or to calculate the derivative, the h on the bottom has to be gone. So what happens here, the h on the bottom is going to cancel out with the h on the top, and that gives us 2. All right, now, in this case, uh, this is just, this is our slope. There's no x value to substitute in, this is simply the slope. And I'm sure most of y'all recognize 2x minus 3 is a linear function, right? And the slope of any linear function is the number in front of x. So we knew before I started that the slope here had to be 2. And that's what we end up with using the longhand formula. Now, let's try the same problem again. Now this time let's use our alternative formula. Okay, if we're looking for just the slope, Right, not a general expression for the slope, but just the slope. Okay, let's try the next formula. So come on up here. And once again, we're going to find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of f of x at the given point. So the same problem this time. Only this time, let's use, uh, okay, well, let's use our other, our alternative formula. The limit as x approaches our x value. So as x approaches 2. All right, so the limit as x approaches 2. Uh, the function at x minus the function at 2 divided by x minus 2. So as we set this up, this is the way it's going to set up, all right? 
and then the, the limit as x approaches 2. So in the alternative formula, there's no h. This is simply as x approaches the x value of your point. So let's set this up. Now the function itself, f of x is simply your function, so this would be 2x minus 3, okay, minus the function at 2. Now the function at 2, you substitute 2 in for x. So you can hear the bell going off, so it's... So let's say the function at 2, substitute 2 in for x, will give us what? 2 times 2 minus 3. And all this divided by x minus 2. Now, whenever we get finished, the uh, x minus 2 on the bottom of the fraction has to cancel out with the numerator. So not h this time like in the other problem. It has to be that binomial has to cancel out somehow with the same binomial in the numerator. So let's see if we can uh, kind of simplify the, the, the numerator here. This will give us 2x minus 3. Okay, and let's see, what do we have here? This is 4 minus 3, which would be, uh, let's see, 4 minus 3 would be minus, minus 1. So minus 1 divided by x minus 2, all right? Now, I'll uh, simplify the numerator a little bit more here. Combining like terms, we have 2x minus 4 over x minus 2. Now, remember what I said, the x minus 2 on the bottom has to cancel out somehow with x minus 2 in the numerator, and that's what we have here. Uh, factor 2 off the numerator gives x minus 2. You get x minus 2 on the bottom, and the x minus 2s cancel out. It gives us a slope of 2. Now, once again, this is, a, this is your slope. Now, one, you know, one good thing about this formula, uh, you know, if, if all you're looking for is the slope at a particular point, this formula is pretty good. It, you know, the, the algebra in a lot of cases isn't quite as, as difficult as the uh, algebra on the other formula. But all this formula gives you now, again, it just gives you the slope at a point. If you need the actual derivative expression, then this, this formula won't give that to you. All right, so let's try, let's try another example. This is a little linear function. Okay, let's try a parabola. So let's try a parabola. Now, so to get started, it says find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of f of x at the given point. So let's try f of x equals x plus 2 at the point negative 1, 3. So at the point negative 1, 3. So, now, once again, let's use the first formula. Let's use the general derivative formula, right? This will be uh, the limit. As h approaches 0, it's always 0, the limit is h approaches 0, of the function at x plus h okay, minus the function itself divided by h. So let's try this formula right here. Now, to start off, you've got to take x plus h and you've got to plug it into your, fun your function for x. Right? So let's see, uh, substituting in uh, x plus h in for x will give us x plus h quantity squared okay, plus 2 minus. All right, so that's the function at x plus h. You just take x plus h, substitute it in for all x's in your function. Okay, minus the function itself. Now, the function itself is x squared plus 2. Okay, those are grouping symbols there. And then all this divided by h. All right. Now, this expression in the numerator, now we've got to be able to simplify that. Now, that's, this is where your algebra skills come in. All right. Now let's start off. Let's start off with the x plus h quantity squared, because a lot of students have have a little bit of difficulty with that. So x plus h quantity squared. Now, if you need to, you can expand this and then use the full method. Because remember, this is simply x plus h times x plus h. So as you simplify x plus h quantity squared, you can just use the full method to simplify this, uh, now, or you can use your shortcut. So remember the shortcut. This would be x squared plus. 2xh plus h squared. So you can use your uh, full method or you can just use the shortcut for a binomial squared. So you take your first term and square it, then you multiply the two, the two terms together and double it, gives you 2xh, and then you take the second term and square it, gives you h squared. All right, so let me erase this now. All right, so let's erase this. Let's bring this down. Go. So let's bring this down. This would be equal to, and we see this x squared. So x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, okay, plus 2, okay, minus the function itself. So x squared plus 2. 
and all this divided by H. Remember what we said a minute ago, when you're using this formula, the H on the bottom has to cancel out with it, with an H on top. So we got to, the H on the bottom has to go. So let's see if we can simplify this a little bit more. Now all we have to do here is distribute the negative inside our parentheses. We simplified our powers. And this will give us what? X squared plus 2XH plus H squared plus 2 minus X squared minus 2. And all this divided by H. Now, what happens with this particular, I mean, when you use this formula, like I said, a lot of these terms will cancel out. And this is what we have here. The X squared, so this is going to cancel out with the minus X squared here. The plus 2 and the minus 2, those two cancel out, so those two are gone. And that leaves us now with 2XH plus H squared divided by H. All right. Now, we'll get the factor H off that binomial here now. So let's see what we get. That'll be H times 2X plus H divided by H. Now this time the H's will cancel, and that gives us 2X plus H. So we, we extend the page a little bit. So once again, it gives us 2X plus H. Now we're taking the limit now as H approaches zero of 2X plus H. So once the H on the bottom is gone, okay, now we're gonna take the limit as H approaches zero. So H here becomes zero, and the derivative is 2X. Right now, now, so with, with, with the general derivative formula here like we're looking at now, I said that you get an expression for the slope. Right? Now remember, this is a parabola, right? So if you look at the graph of your parabola, it's like this. This one's going to open up. So anywhere on that parabola, we can plug the x value and x value in for x in our derivative, and it'll give us a slope of that at that particular x value, that particular point in the curve. Right, now this time, we're looking at the uh, slope as x approaches, let's see our point is coming up here. So there's our point. So the x value is negative 3, right? So we got to substitute negative, or no, I'm sorry, negative 1. This will be at x equal negative 1. So plug negative 1 in for x. Let's see what we get for our slope. Now it'll be 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So here's our slope. Right, so the slope at the point negative 1, 3 should be negative 2. Right, now, let's try the same problem again using the other formula now. So trying the alternative formula. So go on over. Right, so same problem. So let's see. Uh, go. So using the same problem. Uh, now once again, we're finding the slope at the given point at the point negative 1, 3. Now let's use our, our other, our, our slope at a point formula now. Limit as x approaches the x value here is negative one, so as x approaches negative one, uh, the function itself minus the function at negative one divided by x minus negative one or plus a positive one. All right. So as we set up our set up our expression, this is the way we're going to set it up. So the f of x is simply the function itself. So x squared plus two minus function at negative 1, so substitute negative 1 in for x now, so be negative 1 squared plus 2, all this divided by x plus 1. Now, with this formula, you end up with a binomial in your denominator. Now, that binomial has to cancel out with the same binomial in your numerator, so this should simplify somehow. We should have an x plus 1 in there somewhere, so, so it'll cancel out with the x plus 1 in the bottom of our fraction. Now let's see what this simplified to. Now this will be x squared plus 2 minus, what do we get here? Now this will be uh, 1 plus 2 is 3, so minus 3. So minus 3, x squared plus 2 minus 3, all that divided by x plus 1. All right. Now combining like terms now, we give us x squared minus 1 in the numerator divided by x plus 1. All right. Now, I said we got to have, uh, by factoring uh, or whatever, we're going to have to uh, factor a little bit further so that we, we can, you can see the x plus 1's cancel out. x squared minus 1, this is the difference of two squares. That will factor x plus 1 times x minus 1 divided by x plus 1. Now, the x plus 1's cancel out, and that leaves us with x minus 1. Now, once again, we're taking the limit as x approaches negative 1. This is going to give us the slope at the point, at the, the point negative 1, 3. So uh, substitute negative 1 in for x now gives us what? Negative 1 minus 1, which is
which is negative 2. Now notice we get the same slope using this formula that we just got on the other using the uh, using the general derivative formula. Right. Uh, the only difference is now the general derivative formula over here, back here, gave us 2x. It gave us a, a slope expression where we can substitute any x value we want in to get to get our slope. Come on over here. Now this one just gives us the slope only at the point negative 1, 3. Now if all you need is a slope, this formula here is, is great. I mean, it, uh, in a lot of cases, the algebra won't be quite as bad as you saw in the other example. But if all you need is the slope at a particular point, this is the formula to use. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, let's try a, uh, okay, let's try a radical. Right, so let's try a radical. These tend to give students more trouble than some others. So let's try, once again, we're going to do both formulas. So let's do uh, the limit. Let's do the limit as, as h approaches 0 of the function at x plus h okay, minus the function itself divided by h. And once again, substitute x plus h in for every x in your function. Now, we only have the 1x there, so this would be the square root of x plus h under the radical okay, minus the square root of x we put those in groupings and we'll divide by h. Okay. Now, let me bring this answer down here now. So we got the uh, square root of x plus h minus the square root of x divided by h. Now, remember we said somehow when we get this finished now, the h on the bottom has to cancel out with an h in the numerator. Right? In order to get a, an expression for the general derivative of our, of our, uh, our general derivative uh, uh, of uh, the square root of x. Now let's see, I said, now we've looked at these types of problems before, so we're going to have to rationalize the numerator. So if you're going to do that, now to rationalize the numerator, we're going to use its conjugate. Now this is the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x. Its conjugate will be the square root of x plus h okay, plus the square root of x. So we're going to multiply that to the top of the fraction. That'll be its conjugate. If you multiply it to the top of the fraction, remember, you also have to multiply, whatever you multiply to the numerator, you got to multiply the same thing to the denominator here. So we're going to multiply the square root x plus h plus the square root of x in the denominator. Right, so let's come on down. Now, what we end up with here, we end up with a difference of two squares when you multiply the two, the two conjugates, right? So this would be the square root of x plus h squared minus the square root of x squared. All this divided by h times the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Now, when you square the two radicals, that removes the radicals in the numerator. And we'll have the, uh, the numerator rationalized, right? So we end up here with x plus h, okay, minus x in the numerator, all that over this right here, right? So h times the square root of x plus h, okay, plus the square root of x. Right, so if we get it simplified here, let me extend the page a little bit. There we go. Now, to simplify, notice, combine like terms now after we have the radicals removed, so the x's are going to cancel out. And we end up now with h over h times the square root of x plus h okay, plus the square root of x. And what happens now, the h's are going to cancel out. Right, so the h on the outside of your parentheses, that's going to cancel out with the h in the numerator. And we end up with 1 divided by the square root x plus h plus the square root of x. All right. Now remember now we're taking the limit as h approaches 0. So remember what happens now. Okay. h goes to 0 and that will give us 1 over the square root of x plus 0 is the square root of x plus the square root of x. Now remember now when you add radicals all you just add their numerical coefficients. So 1 square root of x plus 1 square root of x this gives us 1 divided by 2 times the square root of x. Now, what we have here, now this is an expression for the derivative. For the derivative, This is an expression for the slope. Okay, this is the derivative of, of uh, the square root of x. Okay, this is the derivative. Okay, this right here itself is a function. It has its own graph and everything. 
right? So I said, using this particular longhand formula, the general derivative formula, you know, you get this expression, not just a number like you do with the other formula. All right, so this here, so all I have to do now for any x value, all I have to do is substitute it in. And what was our number up here? Now we're using the point 42. So substitute 4 in for x. Let's see what we get. So at x equal 4. Right, so substituting 4 in will give us 1 over 2 times the square root of 4, which would be 1 over 2 times 2, or 1 fourth. So we have a, so that's our slope. So this is the slope, 1 fourth. Right. Now, if you can remember the graph of what the, of the, of the square root function, it looks sort of like this here. Let me see if I can just kind of sketch it real quick. So the square root function, so 1, 2, and it does something like this right here. So you look at the square root function. So one, two, three, four. It kind of looks like this right here. Now the point four, two would be one, two, three, four would be right here. Now notice, if you draw a tangent line to the curve of the square root function right here, you see how, uh, see how that's not very steep? Okay, the slope here would be, you'd be going up one, and the run would be four. So the rise is one, and the run is four. So you have a very, uh, a, a not a very steep uh, tangent line to the slope of the uh, square root function at the point uh, four, four, two. All right, so that's your slope, one fourth. So uh, now we can find the slope anywhere we want to by just substituting in for x. If I want to x equal one, the slope at x equal 1, you just have to plug it in for x. Now, let's try the other formula. I'm going to do it one more time, so I want you to be able to have a good idea as to how the, the two, the two uh, uh, expressions are used and how the two slope expressions are, and the differences between the two. So let's try it. Same thing again. Right, so same thing again. Now, let's see if we can, you know, uh, let's see. Once again, this is the f of x equals the square root of x at the point 4, 2. Now, this time, let's use the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x minus f of 4 divided by x minus 4. So let's try this right here. Right now, the function minus the function of 4. So this would be the square root of x minus the square root of 4 divided by x minus 4. Right, and uh, as we simplify this now, the square root of 4 is 2, so we end up here with the square root of x minus 2 over x minus 4. Now probably the easiest way to uh, simplify this expression, so uh, in, at the end, the x minus 4 on the bottom, that whole binomial has to cancel out with x minus 4 in the numerator. Because remember now, using this formula, this is the slope at a point formula, all it does is give us a number. Uh, the other formula gives us the entire, gives us a, the derivative, basically the x expression. Now this just gives us the derivative at a point the slope at a point. Now, to simplify this, we have the square root of x minus 2 over x minus 4. Now, let's rationalize the numerator. So, once again, let's multiply by our conjugate, just like we did before. So, this would be the square root of x plus 2. And again, multiply that to the denominator, square root of x plus 2 on the denominator. All right. Now, as we simplify, multiply the two conjugates together, will give us the square root of x squared minus 2 squared divided by x minus 4 times that radical. So x minus 4 times the square root of x. So it's the square root of x plus 2. Okay. Let's come on down. Now, squaring the radical, that gets rid of the, that gets rid of the radical, basically. So you have x minus 4 on top divided by x minus 4 times the square root of x plus 2 in the denominator. Right. Now, you see the x minus 4s? Right, so the, the two binomials are going to cancel. Now just remember now, when you cancel the binomial, it will only cancel with another binomial just like it. In other words, you can't, just, you can't cancel parts of a binomial or any polynomial. You've got to cancel the whole binomial or none of it. So that reduces to 1. This reduces to 1. That gives me 1 over the square root of x plus 2. Now, we're taking the limit as x approaches 4 now. So once the x, plus, x minus 4 is gone, now let's go ahead and use direct substitution, substitute 4 in for x to get our slope. And this will be 1 over the square root of 4 plus 2, which is, so come on down here, let me extend the page a little bit. Okay, this will be 1 over 
2 plus 2, which is 1 fourth. Right, so once again, this is our slope. There you go. All right, so uh, you know the, the algebra is uh, you know maybe a little bit easier than the other formula. Not a lot, but maybe a little bit. Uh, but uh, you know, really not that not that you know, really pretty pretty easy to use. But like I said, the only disadvantage to using this formula is all you get is a number. You just get the slope. That's all. It doesn't give you the actual derivative expression. All right, let's try some different problems. I just want to do a couple of these. Okay, let's look at this problem right here. Let's try a fraction, 10 over x. Okay, find the derivative of f of x. Now this time now we're not looking at, we're not trying to find the slope at a point. So we can't use the, you know, the our alternative formula. To find the derivative, we have to use the general derivative formula. That's the limit as, well, I'm sorry, the limit as h approaches zero of the function at x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Okay, this is the only formula that will work. All you're trying to find is the derivative, this is it. We're not finding the derivative at a point, we're not finding the slope, right? So if we were, we could use the other formula, but this is the one we have to use. So to get started, let's, let's take the x plus h and substitute it into our function for x. Now, instead of, now instead of 10 over x, that'll be 10 over x plus h minus f of x, which would be 10 over x, All this divided by h. All right. This function here minus f of x. So the function of x plus h minus the function itself. I'll go ahead and put grouping symbols around those. Now, what you what, what we have now when we make this substitution, and we've kind of seen these in some of our uh, some of our bell work problems that we've done. Okay, what you have here is a complex fraction. So you got the two fractions in the numerator of another fraction, right? So a complex fraction. So uh, let's take a look at how to simplify this now. You have 10 over x plus h minus 10 over x, okay, divided by h. Now what we're going to have to do, now there's several ways to do this. You know, some, some people show to go ahead and subtract these two fractions, get your least common denominator. Now what I like to do, I like to just multiply through and get rid of the, frac the two fractions in the numerator. So now whenever you multiply, we're going to multiply the, the, the two fractions by the least common denominator of the two fractions. Now the least common denominator would be x times x plus h. So we're going to multiply that to the numerator. Now if you multiply it to the numerator, remember you also, you also have to multiply it to the denominator too. So we're going to multiply it down here as x times x plus h. Now, so we're going to multiply that to the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction. Now whenever you multiply, okay, to the, uh, uh, now as you multiply x times x plus h to the first fraction here, and you're just using the distributive property. We're going to multiply to the first, this fraction here, then we're going to multiply to the second fraction. Now, let me show you what happens. Okay, as you multiply x, x times x plus h to 10 over x plus h, let me show you that multiplication. I'm going to come down here. It's going to be 10 over x plus h times your least common denominator, x times x plus h. Now, think of it as that over 1. So as you multiply into that fraction, you can remember you can cancel out from numerator to denominator. What happens is the x plus h will cancel whenever you do your multiplication, and that gives you 10 times x. So 10x. Alright. So I'm, now I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Alright, I just wanted to show you that multiplication. So as you multiply to this fraction right here in our numerator, it will give us 10x minus. Now, whenever you multiply x times x plus h to the other fraction, now this time, the x's cancel out, and that gives us 10 times x plus h, the other factor. Now, all this divided by h times x times x plus h in our denominator. Now, right now we've, we've, we've simplified the fraction quite a bit. We no longer have a complex fraction. We don't have fractions within fractions now. All we have to do is simplify the numerator. Now, remember now, using this formula now, the h on the bottom, when we get done, has to cancel out somehow with an h in the numerator. So let's uh, multiply 10 inside of our parentheses here. That gives us 10x minus 10x. So just uh, ne multiply negative 10 to the h, we give us a minus 10h. Now, all this divided by h times x times x plus h. Right. 
Now, after you've done your multiplication, now let's go through and combine like terms. So these two here will add together. And that gives us negative 10h in our numerator. So negative 10h divided by h times x times x plus h. Now, notice what happens. Right? After you've simplified your, your, your uh, com or combined like terms, you've done your multiplication, combine like terms. Now, what happens now? The h's are going to cancel. So those cancel out. And that leaves us now with negative 10 over x times x plus h. Now remember now, now we're going to take the limit as h approaches 0. So as, as h approaches 0, this goes to 0. And that gives us negative 10 over x times x. And the derivative is negative 10 over x squared. Now this is the general derivative of 10 over x. Now this is an expression for our slope. If I need to know the slope anywhere on the original function, anywhere on 10 over x on, that, on the graph of that function, now we, all we have to do is substitute the x value in and that'll give us the slope. All right, so that'll give us our slope. So uh, once again, using uh, to find this derivative though, you had to use the general derivative formula. Uh, you don't have a choice. Now let's try a little something different. Let's try this problem here. This is our fifth example. It says, uh, uh, is uh, f of x equals x minus 2 differentiable at x equal 2? Now, this is an absolute value function. Now, we kind of looked at, we've looked at these a little bit already before. We said you got an absolute value function, x minus 2 equals 0, x equal 2. Typically, at an absolute value function of some type, at 2, something happens. So, at x equal 2 in the graph of the absolute value of x minus 2, something's going to happen. Either you're going to get a V-shape of some type. It may open down, it may open up, or you could get something like this. All right, so at x equal 2, something's going to happen. All right, so let's see what happens here. All right. Now, what we're going to check here, let's check, uh, now this is at x equal 2, so we have the x value. So what we have to do, we have to check the slopes, uh, the, or the derivative from the left and the derivative from the right. So as you look at this function, now this is f of x equals absolute value of x minus 2. And this is equivalent to, remember from the left-hand direction, it is the opposite of x minus 2. Uh, for x less than or equal to 2. And just x minus 2 for x greater than 2. Right? So, so 2 is where something's going to happen. So you got the left-hand part of the absolute value uh, function and the right-hand part of the absolute value function. And a 2, something typically is going to happen. Right. Now, so let's check the left-hand derivative, if you will, uh, or the left-hand limit. And then we'll check the, uh, the right-hand limit also. So let's check the, uh, we'll check the derivative. Now, since we're we have the x value here, let's use the derivative at a point formula. So let's use, so we'll do the limit as x approaches 2. All right, so x approaches 2, since we're given the x value of f of x minus f of 2 divided by x minus 2. So this is what we're going to check. Now the function itself will be the opposite. This is this will be from the left-hand direction. So we're checking the left-hand derivative. So this will be the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. Uh, so this time we're going to use the uh, left-hand part of the, uh, the, the, the expression, if you will. So the x minus 2. So put those in grouping symbols. Minus. Uh, the function at 2, so substituting 2 in for x will give us uh, 0 minus, will give us 2 minus 0, I'm sorry, so 2 minus 0, or 2 minus 2. There we go. All this divided by x minus 2. Now, 2 minus 2 is 0, just cross that out. And we end up with, what we end up with now, negative, the opposite of x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. And what happens, the x minus 2's cancel to 1 over 1, we end up with negative 1. Okay, now this is the slope, the slope, if you will, from the left-hand direction. That's the left-hand derivative. Now let's check the, uh, okay, let's check the uh, derivative from the right. So this time we're going to do the limit as x approaches 2 from the right-hand direction. And uh, this time we'll do the function itself, and this will be from the right-hand direction. So from the right-hand direction, we're going to use just the x minus 2, right? Come on down here. Right, so this will be x minus 2, okay, minus uh, 2 minus 2, okay, 
all this divided by x minus 2. And uh, the 2 minus 2, 2 minus 2 is just 0, and this will give us x minus 2 over x minus 2. These cancel out to 1 over 1. So this is our, the, so 1 is going to be the, the limit or the right-hand derivative. So the right-hand derivative is 1. This is our slope, if you will. Okay, the other slope up here was negative 1. So these two over here are different. And so it asks if the, if the graph, uh, if f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2 is differentiable, and the answer is no. Okay, the left-hand limit is not equal to the right-hand limit. And if you look at this, the, the, uh, the graph of this absolute value of function, so 1, 2, if you remember this, almost, this will do something like this. You get that V shape, something like this right here. Okay, you have a, a sharp corner at x equal 2. Remember what we said in the last video? Okay, corners, cusps, vertical asymptotes, and discontinuities, there's no, uh, there's no derivative. So at a sharp a corner like that, the derivative doesn't exist. So the left-hand limit is negative 1, that's the slope of that line, and the right-hand limit is negative 1, which where the right-hand derivative is negative 1, that would be the slope of the right-hand part of the V. Uh, so the answer is no, this is not differential at x equal 2. Now I've got one more problem here, let's try this right here. To show that the graph of f of x equals x to the one-third is not differentiable at the point 0, 0. So I'm going to show that it's not differentiable. So, let's see, uh, now once again we're given the point here, so we're given the point 0, 0, so once again let's use our alternative formula. We'll do the limit as x approaches 0, so once again we're going to use the x value of your point that you're given. So you've got to have the x value. If you don't have it, you've got to find it somehow to use the, uh, the slope at a point formula. Right, so x equals 0, and let's see, this will be the function itself, which would be x to the one-third power minus 0 to the 1 third power. So the function itself minus the function at 0 divided by x minus 0. Right. Now, uh, x minus 0 is just 0, so we end up here with x to the 1 third power divided by x. Now, somehow the x on the bottom has to go right, in, order for the, in order for us to get the slope here. Right? So it has to go. And now we have x to the 1 third power. Now, what we're going to have to do with this expression so I need somehow I need x over x. So I need the numerator to be x. Now to make the numerator x, I have to multiply the top of the fraction by x to the two-thirds power. Then remember now, one-third plus two-thirds is three over three or one. So remember when you multiply two, two, two factors, two terms with the same base or two uh, factors of the same base, you add your exponents together. So this will give us in the numerator, this is x over x times x to the two-thirds power. So you multiply x to the two-thirds power on top, then you also have to multiply two-thirds to the denominator also. Right. Now what happens is that the x on the bottom has to cancel out with the numerator somehow, and there it goes. So the x over x is going to cancel out. We end up with one over x to the two-thirds power. Now we're in the limit as x approaches zero, Plug it in, we end up now with 1 over 0 to the 2 thirds power, which is 1 over 0. Now, division by 0 is not defined, so this right here is, this, so in this case we have an undefined slope. So undefined. So undefined slope. So division at, uh, so uh, uh, you know, 1 divided by, or, uh, 1 divided by 0 is simply not defined. Now, if you look at the graph on this particular function, now if you look at the graph, it does something like this right here. And I'm not going to do the exact graph, but I believe it does something comes through like this, or like that. Well, actually, no. So actually, it does something more like this, if I can remember correctly. Like this, and then like this. So you can see that zero, zero here. Tangent line would have a vertical tangent line. So you have a vertical tangent line at zero zero. Now, so you have a vertical tangent line at the point zero zero. Remember what we, what we said? 
the vertical tangent line, the derivative doesn't exist. So that's the reason for one over zero in an undefined slope. So that indicates you know, uh, uh, that the, the, you know, there is a tangent line, but it's just a vertical tangent line. The derivative doesn't exist at that particular point. You know, that's the last of our examples, and uh, we'll do the next video shortly.